On the exact binomial test is a simple yet powerful technique that every data scientist should have in their toolbox. So in this video, we'll explore why we need the exact binomial test and examine a real world application where I used it to publish in scientific paper on encounters of marine litter particles on the Baltic seafloor. And the exact binomial test shows how the probability of success in our observed sample differs from the expected or hypothesized probability of success. Let's explore two examples. Have you ever applied for a bunch of jobs and had no clue what your chances are of landing one? <laughs> well, me too. So imagine you applied for 10 jobs and assumed your probability of success landing a job is 50%. After some time, you received responses from all the positions and seven of them offered you a job. Dream come true, right? Now, let's test how accurate your expectations were using the binom test function. And the test tells us that the actual probability of success in this case was 70%. That's 20% higher than our initial guess of 50%. Does that mean our expectation was way off? Not necessarily, and here is why. With only 10 data points, a 20% difference might not be statistically significant. And that's exactly what the high p-value of 0.3 tells us. In statistics, a high p-value, typically above 0.05, means we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So while the observed success rate exceeded our expectations by 20%, this small sample size prevents us from drawing strong conclusions. All right, for our second example, let's test the hypothesis that a whopping 80% of ocean litter is plastic, a statistic often reported in scientific studies. Imagine we go out and collect 100 pieces of trash, but only 70 of them turned out to be plastic. That's 70% again, interesting. But here is the twist. This 10% difference from our expected 80% is actually half the size of the difference in the first example. So, did our guess fit reality better this time around? Nope, our initial guess was wrong. The p-value being less than 0.05 tells us that there is significant difference between the 70% of plastic we found and the 80% we expected. Basically, we discovered significantly less plastic than what previous studies reported. That means we can reject the null hypothesis, the idea that 80% of ocean litter is plastic. Now, you might be wondering why was a 20% difference not significant in the first example, but a 10% difference is significant here. Again, it all boils down to sample size. In the first example, we only had 10 data points, so that even a 20% difference might be due to chance. But in this second example, we collected 100 pieces of litter, giving us a much larger sample size. With more data, we are more confident that a 10% difference is a real effect, not just random noise. But don't get me wrong, bigger isn't always better in life. But in statistics, size definitely matters. So the coolest thing about the binomial test is that you can set the expected probability of success yourself. This opens the door for running multiple binomial tests within a single study. In fact, that's exactly what I did in a paper I published in 2019. I used multiple binomial tests to tackle two different hypotheses all while studying the number of marine litter encounters over six years. Here is what I looked at. First, each bar represents the chance of finding a specific type of litter, like plastic or glass, in a particular year. Since I had no clue what to expect, I assumed a 50% chance of encountering any litter type. For example, in 2012, I found a total of 334 pieces of litter but only 99 were plastic, which translates to 29.6%. This was significantly lower than the expected 50%. The binomial test came in handy a second time. This time, I used the probability of finding plastic in the first year as my new expected value. 
This let me compare the first year to every other year and see if the proportion of plastic went up or down over time. For instance, check out the last year of the study. The proportion of plastic litter in the Baltic Sea skyrocketed to 52.6%, compared to just 29.6% in 2012. Super simple but powerful, right? Now, let's learn how to run 72 binomial tests and how to recreate this graph in R. First thing first, we got to read in our data, the not so glamorous Baltic litter analysis. In this dataset, total litter will represent our total number of trials and for the test, and litter per category will be the number of successes x. And here's the magic. We'll use the map function from the poor package. This powerhouse function lets us apply the binomial test to every single row in our data in one shot. And what do we get? Well, we estimate the probability of encountering a particular litter category along with confidence intervals and p-values, all wrapped up in a neat little table. Now, the tidy function from the broom package and the nesting functions from the tidy r package simply put all the results in a tidy table, but they are not imported right now. The key takeaway is that we just run 36 binomial tests in a few lines of code, and this is just the beginning. Now, we'll use the range function to sort everything by litter category and year. Then, we can group the data by litter category. This will put all the results for each litter type together. Finally, we can wrap the first estimate from each group. Remember, that's the probability of encountering that specific litter type in 2012. We'll pop that value into a new extra column for easy reference. This new column becomes super important. It'll hold the expected probability we'll use for the next 36 binomial tests. In these tests, we'll compare the chance of finding a specific type of litter in a specific year to the chance of finding that litter in the first year of the study. Bonus tip, the GT Tools package comes in handy here. It can translate those numeric p-values we got from the tests into easy-to-understand significant stars. We can then add these stars to our table and, later on, to our plot. Now that we run all these tests, let's bring everything together. We'll combine the results from both sets of binomial tests into a single awesome table. This table will show the estimated probability of finding each litter category in each year, along with their 95% confidence intervals. Plus, we'll include p-values with stars to highlight any significant changes in litter proportions over time. To make the trends over time even clearer, we can add a dashed line to the graph. This line will represent the simple average proportion of each litter category found across all the years we studied. All right, time to turn this data into a chart. We'll use a magic ggplot command to do some cool things. First, we'll put the years on the x-axis, like a timeline. On the y-axis, we'll show the estimated probabilities of finding each litter category, along with their confidence intervals. Think of them like error bars. To keep things organized, we'll use a function called facetwrap, to create separate plots for each litter category. This way we can see what's happening with each type of litter over time. We'll also add a horizontal dashed line to show the average percentage of litter across all the years. And finally, to highlight any significant changes, we'll use the geomtext function to add litter star symbols directly on the plot. And voila, with 72 binomial tests under our belt, we've recreated the plot from the research paper. Now you can save this chart in any format, size or quality you like with the pragmatic GD save function. And if you found this video pragmatic so far, smash that like button and consider joining the channel. So, as you have seen, the binomial test is a powerful tool. It works great for situations with yes-no or success-failure outcomes, especially when you are new to statistics and don't feel comfortable with more complex methods like logistic regression. 
But here's the catch. The binomial test is limited to only two outcomes. What if you have more than that? That's where the chi-square test comes in. This test is a super useful alternative because it can handle multiple outcomes with ease and it even works for analyzing one or two samples. And if you want to see how to create this plot with multiple chi-square tests in just one line of code and learn how to interpret all these results in only 5 minutes, just watch this video next.